Good morning, River Run. We are so grateful that you could join us again this morning. I want to encourage you to um, grab some crackers, some juice. Uh, we're going to have communion after the service again, as we do every week. I want to make sure you're prepared for that. Also want to encourage you to join us in song. You know, watching on video, it's one of those things that maybe you just sometimes sit there and watch the songs. I want to encourage you and your family to sing along with us. Um, so we put the words down there at the bottom of the screen for you. You know, we want this worship experience to be as engaging as possible, even though we're doing it remotely. But we are glad that you joined us this morning. I pray that that you have a great morning worshiping with us. I hope that this series of why has been an encouraging one for you as we wrap it up today. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the series that we had, just being able to answer the question, why? Why are we who we are here at River Run? Why are we who we are in your Son? And I pray it's been an encouragement. It's been, um, it's given us opportunities to kind of plug some things into our lives so when we encounter other people, we're able to answer that question as to why. And Father, we pray for Dan as he's going to be delivering the message here in a few minutes. Pray for the praise band as they lead us in song. Father, we're doing all this for your glory, your honor. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, River Run Christian Church. We're so glad you're here to worship with us on this most awesome morning. Praise God, praise God. A time to worship together, lift our hands, and give God all the glory this morning. We're so glad we get to do this with you today. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Come on, you know the words. Oh, your grace so free washes over.
Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, when death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Good morning, River Run. I am so happy that you are with us this morning. Over the past several weeks, we have been talking about why the church exists and the values that we hold dear as a church, not only River Run Christian Church, but the church as a whole. What do we value the most? We're talking about how we value portraying the attitude of Christ. We value having a passion for the word. We value prioritizing people. We value having a God-honoring unity. Last week, Aaron talked about practicing integrity and how we value that. And this morning, our discussion is going to be how to portray authenticity. You know, when I was just a young lad, I went with my mother to uh, a friend of hers. She was an elderly woman. And when we got there, we were in the dining room chatting. And I looked over on the uh, table uh, by the dining room table, and there was a ball of fruit. And there was this apple that just looked beautiful. I wanted that apple. So without asking, without uh, getting permission to do so, I went over and took this apple, and immediately my mom and the lady we were visiting said, you don't want that. But they were wrong. I did want that. And so I took a big bite out of that apple, only to find out immediately that it was a wax apple which explained why they said, I don't want it, and why I should have listened. You know, I'm thinking about that because I immediately knew that this was not authentic. It was not the genuine thing. It was not a real apple. And a life lesson that I learned from that, <laughs> besides being obedient and not being uh, an ornery kid, and uh, uh, getting uh, disciplined when I got home. The best, one of the lessons I learned from that is when you really know the original, when you really know the real thing, when you really know what is genuine, then you very quickly can identify something that is not. I think when you look in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, we read about the story of David and Goliath. And it's a story that we've all known since childhood, if you've been in the church for uh, most of your life. David was sent to the front lines, the, the, the nation of Israel. 
and uh, the Philistine armies were facing each other. One, Israel was on one mountain and, and the Philistines were on another mountain. And in between them, there was a valley. And every day, a champion of the Philistines came out and challenged Israel to fight. You see, it was very common back then that when two armies were facing each other, that both armies would send their champions out, their greatest, most powerful, most victorious warriors. And they would fight, which would uh, do away with the needless death and, and wounding and the blood and, and, and the pain that war caused. When the two champions fought, whoever won, then the, the defeated warrior's army would surrender and submit to the victorious champion's army. And this was what was happening with Goliath. Goliath, the Philistine champion, was coming out, and every day for 40 days, Goliath challenged Israel. And Israel was scared to death. For 40 days, two times a day, morning and evening, Goliath came out and challenged us, come on, send your biggest and your best. And Israel cowered away. Now you have to understand, Goliath was nine feet tall. He was a, a warrior that has been in battle his entire life. And Israel knew that they would not be able to defeat. They, they had no champion that was capable of overcoming Goliath. Well, one day, David was sent to the front lines by his father. His three oldest brothers were serving in the army for Israel. And David was sent to take lunch to his brothers, in essence, and also some food for his commanders. And when David arrived, Goliath had just stepped out on the battlefield and challenged Israel. And David was just amazed that no one was standing up for God's army, for God's people. And so David said, who is this that is defying God's people? Why are we not standing up for God? And when Saul, the king, heard about this, he called for David. And David said, I can take him. I will go to battle. I will represent and be the champion for Israel. And Saul, he, he had to chuckle because David was just a young boy. He was just a shepherd. He wasn't a trained warrior. And, and Saul said this, you can't go against him. You're just a lad. And Goliath, he is a seasoned warrior, a victorious warrior ever since his youth. But David corrected Saul and he said, I have stood against lions. I have stood against bears. As I was protecting the sheep, if a bear or a lion came to attack the sheep, I stood and I defeated them by the power of God in me said, if I can defeat a bear and if I can defeat a lion, I certainly can defeat this Philistine. And so Saul agreed. He said, well, go do it. And we pick up in, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38, we pick up this narrative. Then Saul clothed David in his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor and he tried in vain to go for he had not tested them and then David said to Saul I cannot go with these for I have not tested them and so David put them off and then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch and he slung with his sling in his hand he approached the Philistine. And of course, when, when David came out, uh, Goliath was amused. He laughed. He said, what is this? I, am I a dog that you send a boy with sticks out after me? But David stopped him. He said, you have defied the army of God. And by God's hand, I will defeat you. And we know the story. He put the stone in the sling and he slung it and cast it toward Goliath, and it struck him in the forehead, and Goliath fell. David was victorious. He 
had overcome the giant. Goliath's armor weighed almost as much as David did. But David defeated Goliath. You see, David had a choice. David could have done what the king wanted him to do. Strap on his armor and take his sword and go out. Or David could do what he knew he could do. His choice. Be what the king wanted me to be or be who I knew I was. And so he faced that giant. Not with a sword, not with a shield, not with armor, but with a staff and a sling, a stone, and faith in God. Saul doubted his ability. Goliath mocked him and and insulted him. But God gave him the victory. And what can we learn from that? What can we learn about authenticity from that story? Well, I think the first lesson we can pick up from that is that we need to become who we were created to be. David was not a warrior. He was not trained. He was not skilled in the equipment of a warrior, of the armor and the sword. David was a shepherd, and he was skilled in the tools that he used to protect his sheep. And he was also skilled in knowing that God would be with him. Several years back, there was a commercial by Gatorade. And in the commercial, it focused on Michael Jordan. And the commercial said, be like Mike. And and during the time, you have to understand, Michael Jordan was very possibly the greatest basketball player that ever played the game. The man had mad skills. His ability was astonishing. And how he carried himself on the court, he was a champion. No matter what the outcome of the game was, he played like a champion. And and young boys all wanted to be like him. He wanted to play like it. But here's the reality. None of them could be like them. Because Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan. He had very specific skills and abilities. And he worked hard and he practiced to become who he was supposed to be. You know, I, I had a problem of trying to be someone that I wasn't uh, after, after college. I had a couple of professors that I absolutely loved. I, I, I admired them so much that I wanted to, to speak like them. I wanted to preach like them. I wanted to teach like them. One of my professors, I even wanted to dress like him. And it took a while for me to understand that there was no possible way I could be like him. Because I was me. And I didn't have the gifts and the skills and the abilities that these men had. The lesson of this is God created you to be you. God created you to be unique. To be completely different than anyone else. In the, in the creation story, in Genesis chapter 1, we read this in verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God didn't create us to be like Mike, or be like Roger, or be like Glenn, or be like, put a name in. God created us to be like him in his image. And he uniquely created us to be able to do his will and do his work. Paul, in the letter to Ephesians, he says this in Ephesians 2.10. He said, for we are his workmanship. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. When we become one with Jesus Christ, we are no longer who we used to be. We are new in Him. 
When we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God living within us, it leads us to become who God uniquely has created us, created us to be in His image, to be authentic in His image. With the Holy Spirit living within us, we develop fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit that is not natural. It doesn't come to us instinctively. It is something that through our learning and loving and listening to the Holy Spirit, fruit that we can develop. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. With the Holy Spirit, we are also given gifts. Each one of us have unique gifts that have been created and given to us by God. So that we all as a church, when we come together, not just River Run Christian Church, but the body of believers together, coming and uniting together, each using their individual unique gifts, we are able to do what God has called us to do, to go out into the world, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as a body of believers, the body of Christ, we turn the world upside down. We are gifted. We are given fruit. We are in the image of God. We are authentic when we allow God to work through us. And we become who God created us to be, not what the world wants us to be. And the second lesson I think we can learn from the story of David is to be authentic, we need to transform our mind. David knew who he was not. He knew that he wasn't this soldier, this warrior that Saul and the rest of the army of Israel wanted him to be. His brothers even complained that he was there. Why are you here? You're here to uh, tell on us to dad? David knew that he was not this man that everyone wanted him to be. David knew who he should be. David knew who he uniquely was. Paul echoes this in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He tells us, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, by, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed by the world, by the world's thinking. See, the world wants to tell you how you should dress. The, the world wants to tell you what you should eat or where you should go or who you should hang around with, what you should listen to, what you should read. The world always has suggestions for how you can be better. And Paul's telling us, don't listen to the world. Don't conform to the world. Don't try to be like them. But be transformed. Change your mind away from the worldly thinking. Think the way God thinks. Think the way God created you to think. Think the way the Holy Spirit moves you to think so that you can become uniquely you, transforming your mind by the renewal of your minds so that you can understand, so you can discern, so you can test what the world is feeding you and what the world, will of God is in your life, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Last week, Aaron talked about a couple passages in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 1 Peter chapter 3, and he called them the Gemini Cricket passages, referring to how these passages lead us to a good conscience as followers of Jesus Christ. Interestingly, I, I was reading uh, uh, a blog of a friend of mine wrote, a friend that I went to college with. He's a, he's a, a philosophy professor now. And he's been writing, uh, doing a, a writing project with other uh, philosophy professors about the philosophy of Walt Disney. And his focus right now has been on Pinocchio. 
And so that's it kind of was uh, uh, very ironic and, and coincidental how Aaron is talking about the good conscience of, of, of a follower of Jesus Christ and calling it the Jimmy Cricket uh, conscience uh, scriptures and Mark talking about Pinocchio and how Jiminy Cricket was leading him and guiding him and trying to show him the correct way, the way that he should go. But what was really standing out to me is Mark made this comment about Geppetto. He's talking about Geppetto. He said, Geppetto may have carved Pinocchio's body, but it was up to Pinocchio to carve out his character. And Mark went on to say, tell us that uh, the word character in the original language in Greek literally means a tool for carving or engraving. And I think that that so beautifully ties up what authenticity really is. God created us, each one of us, to be unique, to carve out our own character in the image of God. God has given us unique gifts, unique abilities, talents for good works in Christ Jesus. And He's given us a mind to be discerning, a mind to test what the world offers, and the ability to transform our minds to see what is good in God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And this can only be done by surrendering our heart, surrendering our minds, developing a mind of Christ. David won the battle against the giant. But he didn't win by becoming who everybody thought he should be. David won because he believed in God. And he knew that God would guide him. And he used what he knew. And with the power of God, he was victorious. David was authentic. And the lesson for that for us should be, be real. Be genuine. Be authentic. You were created special by God in God's image. Become who God created you to be. And transform your mind so you can see what the world has to offer, but who you truly are. Pray with me. Father, I thank you for the gifts that we have. I thank you for the fruit that we can develop. I thank you for the spirit that is living within us that makes us stand out from anybody else around us because we are not what the world tells us to be. We are who you created us to be in your image, filled with your spirit, with the mind of Christ, so that we are able to test and discern what all the world has to offer and we could see what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect in your eyes. And we can see the path that we should go when we face the giants of the world around us. And we battle these giants, not with the tools that the world wants us to have, but with what you have given us and what we have trained ourselves with and what we have the ability to do. Father, I pray that we focus on you and not the world around us. We focus on who we are, not what the world tells us, but what you have told us. And I pray in all ways that we can Strive to be like Jesus so that when the world sees us, they don't see us. They see you living through us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As you most likely know, tomorrow is Memorial Day. It's a day that is set aside for us to honor the men and women who gave of themselves freely 
sacrificially for our freedom and for our peace and for our tranquility. Watch with me this video that gives tribute to our fallen brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, dads and mothers in the armed forces. Extraordinary men and women went before us with unmatched resilience, enduring hardship when called upon to defend and liberate. They said yes. They found courage to rise with every sun, loyalty toward their country, discipline for every command. Even in the darkest hours, they said yes. They cherished and fought for freedom, so those coming behind them were assured of it. And when the moment came for them to give it all, their futures never to be written, they said yes. Today, we think upon their sacrifice and find our way to honor them saying yes to making the most of what they gave us and filling the earth with God's goodness. We thank them for their yes. They will never be forgotten. Since the birth of our nation, more than 1.3 million men and women of our nation's armed forces has said yes and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom and our safety. And every Memorial Day, once a year, we acknowledge and think about what they did for us, the gift that they have given us through their sacrifice, their sacrifice in overcoming tyranny and oppression. Well, 2,000 years ago, there was one man who paid the ultimate sacrifice. One sinless man, Jesus Christ, gave of his own life to overcome the tyranny of Satan and the oppression of sin that separates us from God. And just before Jesus submitted himself to this sacrifice, he met with his disciples and he broke bread and he, and he gave a cup and he said, when you eat of this and when you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And every week, every Lord's Day, we celebrate a Memorial Day by observing this holy, sacred service of communion with Jesus Christ. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross." Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice, his body broken, his blood poured out for us, we have victory, we have peace, and we have freedom from the tyranny of Satan and the oppression of sin and a restored relationship 
with our Creator. So as we take of the cup, and if we eat the bread, let that be in memorial to the one who paid the price for us. Let's pray. Father, we, we recognize those who gave fully of themselves for our nation. We pray for their families and we pray for their associates. We pray for their brothers and sisters in arms as, as they mourn the loss of a brother and a sister in arms. And we give praise to you for their willingness to stand against the evil that would try to take us over. But Father, we also even more so give you praise and glory for your Son who paid the ultimate price. He took upon himself the sin that he did not commit so that we could have the freedom that we did not earn and have peace with you. So as we take of these sacred elements, may we be very mindful of the cost of our freedom. Just as during this Memorial Day, we are also mindful of the cost of freedom. In Jesus' name, amen.
run, I hope that you were challenged by Dan's message to look deep inside at the masterpiece that God created each of us. And I hope that throughout the week, as you encounter different individuals that you may run into throughout the week, that, that you will make sure that God's glory is seen through the authenticity that you're going to project. Let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. My God, I praise you for the fact that although we may bring what, what to many people would appear to be trash to your feet, you clean that up and, and you shape and mold and, and make what was old new. And you create in us a new creation. And I pray that it's on that new creation that we're able to stand and we're able to project with authenticity who we are in your son. And that it causes people to look and to say, man, I want to be like that. And Father, I pray that you give us the strength through the Holy Spirit to explain to people that they too are a masterpiece created by God. Father, thank you for the ministry you've given us. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. River Run, we want to make sure that you're staying connected, that you're staying healthy, that you're staying safe. If there's anything you need, please make sure to reach out to the church. You can contact the church office by phone, or you can contact us by the website. Have a great week.